Okay, so I've decided to make a tutorial about the communication between Arduino and Unity 3D. And this tutorial is going to be very basic, and this is my first tutorial ever, so don't judge me too hard. Um, what I'll be going through is how to send output from the Arduino through a serial connection, and then receiving that output as input in Unity 3D. And then I'll use that input to move an object around. Uh, before we begin, I want to show you the setup I'm running with. I'm running with two buttons with two pins on them and these two buttons has to be connected to the Arduino board like this. One of the pins has to be connected to the ground and the other one has to be connected to one of the digital pins. As you can see I've connected these two pin 7 and 6 and that's the setup I'll be running with. So before I show you the code from Unity project I want to show you the, the Arduino code because um, now we have two buttons connected to the Arduino and I want to show how how those buttons um, are used as, as input devices and, and how they send something through the serial port. And if you remember from the picture I showed you before, those two buttons were connected to two pins on the Arduino and those were 7 and 6. And I'm going to make two variables here. And those two variables are, are going to show, like, going to be referenced to those two pins. So I'm going to make button pin 1 and an int to hold button pin 2, like this, yeah. And uh, then I need to open the serial connection to the so the Arduino can send some, some data out. And I'm doing that by writing serial.begin. And it should be like an array like 9600, like this. And then I need to define two buttons I've connected to my Arduino. <clears throat> I need to define them as output devices. I mean input devices, sorry. Input devices. And um, I do that by, by writing pin mode. And I give the button pin I want to add as input. Um, like this. And write that it should be input. And I need to do the same for the other button pin, just like this. So now both button pins are defined as input. And I want to be able to read whenever I press one of these buttons. And I want to put it as high from the beginning, uh, the r digital write on them. I want to set that as high so whenever I press the button it, it's low and I need to uh, look out for whenever it's low. Because then I know some data is being sent out, so I'm going to do uh, did it right and I'm going to do that in both pins and I'm going to set it as high as I said so now both pins are, are set as high and that's basically what I need to do in my um, in my setup here And then it's the loop. And what I want to do in the loop is um, is to look for whenever one of these buttons are pressed down. And I can do that by using digital read. And so whenever my button pin one, whenever that one is is it low then I want to do something here and to test it I'll do like serial.print and I'm gonna print left and I want to do the same thing from the other, for the other button and just print right here so whenever pin 1 is pressed down like button 1 is pressed down it prints left and whenever it like button 2 is pressed down prints right so, yeah, let's give it a try, shall we? I'm going to upload it to my Arduino. Compiling sketch, there we go. Okay, so let's see. Now I'm going to press one of the buttons, and it prints left, and then I'm going to press the other button, and it prints right 
It's actually pretty hard to see there. Let's do something. Let's find int line instead. Still like that. Should be easier to see then. <coughs> Left, 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 and right, 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 yeah. Okay. So now when we have done that, we need to send some useful information for Unity. And we do that by writing serial that write um, one, for example. Then we can use that one in Unity to do something. And we need to flush it, serial dot flush, and that's because that we need to wait for the input is done sending and serial flush does that um, then we're gonna put a delay if we don't put this delay unity is like very has a hard time reacting to whenever you're like whenever you're pressing the button and whenever you're stopping the button so if there's no delay you might press the button for a while and stop pressing it but unity still receives data from from your um, receive data as if if the button was down and if the delay is too long, Unity will lag, and if it's too short, it will also lag. So I found that 20 is pretty decent. And I'm going to do the same down here. So now I'm just going to print 2 instead of instead of 1. I'm going to upload that to my Arduino. And with, with all the Arduino play, code in place like this, we can go to Unity. And in Unity I have like an empty scene and everything. And I have a camera, and what I want to do is to I want to add an object, say a cube. I have a cube there. Just gonna make this camera orthographic like this. Yeah, I'm gonna make this cube a little bigger. Nah, not that big. Yeah. So now I have a cube in front of my camera. And what I want to do is to move this cube by pressing the two buttons from the Arduino. And so I want, whenever I receive one, I press one button, it moves to the left. And if I press the right button, it moves to the right like this. So let's make a script that does that. I'm going to use a C sharp script. script. Um, let's wait for Visual Studio to open up. It's fairly slow on my computer. Yep's okay. So the first thing I want to do is to make the function to make the cube move because this script is going to have all the functionality of moving the cube and for receiving the input. So let's make a function called move object, and it needs to take an argument like a parameter called direction because that's what I want to receive from my from my Arduino, I want to send one or two, and if I, it and that one or two decides the direction. So let's see. So if direction is one, I want to do something here, and if direction is two, I want to do something here. For the cube to move, we need some um, speed, and we need some. Uh, we need to calculate how much it should move, so I'm gonna make a float called amount to move. And that amount to move is calculated by by the speed multiplied by time that delta time. Like this. It's just to make it frame rate independent and yeah, whatever. It, it's not important here. It just yeah, I'm just used to doing this. So now when we have this, uh, we need to move the cube. So we move the cube by by transforming the translate the object, and we do that in vector free direction left here, and we need to multiply that by our amount to move, which we calculated up here. And we need to move it in space relative to the world. And we're going to do the same here 
but it's just going to be the opposite direction just like this so now we have all the functionality for the cube to move so now we need to move, like, make the functionality of receiving the, the serial data from, from the Arduino <coughs> and we can do that by by making a serial serial port and we need to implement the, a namespace here called system.io ports and we call that sp and what we want to do is to make a new serial port and that serial port takes two argu arguments and one is is the is the the rate uh, the baud rate and and the other one is is which uh, communication port your Arduino is connected to and if I go here you can see that my Arduino is connected to communication port 3 so I'm going to write communication port 3 and I'm going to write the rate of 9600 as we had before now we have when we have this open we're going to like when we have this we need to open open the serial port and when it's open we also need to set a, a read timeout so that we and we're going to set that very low we're going to set it as one and <clears throat> if we don't set it as at one or if we set it as higher unity might freeze um, while trying to read from the serial port and when when this rate is like so low we need to make a, a try catch down here so because whenever unity wants to check if the port is open and and the port isn't open it's gonna throw an exception so we're going to make a try catch down here I'll show you um, so if SP port like is open then we want to make a try catch we want to try to we want to try to use this move object and use the incoming bytes for something useful so we're going to write move, uh, move object and we're going to take the sp.read byte and now we're going to take the incoming bytes and what we're going to do is we're not going to throw the exception we're just going to catch it like this and we can also print whatever is coming in so now everything should be settled and we can we can go and test our code okay so let's go back in the and see if everything works now have our script here and we should just drag it onto the cube like this and then put a speed here as 50 and right now whenever I press a button it should move left or right so if I try to press the left button the cube moves to the left and if I try to push the right button here the cube moves to the right right left right left right left right yep that's it thanks for watching guys